Don't give up, you're on the breeze of America Don't give up, God is still on the throne Don't give up, you're on the breeze of America Don't give in, remember you're not alone of scripture from Ephesians chapter 2. <coughs> you know all week I've been saying to Sydney, the Lord will help you. You know every time you're preaching or ministering there's always that nervousness and thank God I wouldn't want to lose it. But all week I've been saying to Sydney, the Lord will help you. But you know whenever you arrive at yourself it's not just but I'm depending on the Lord. Amen. That's all. Ephesians chapter 2. I'm going to give you time to get it because whenever I got saved at first we were in the Brethren Church and you know we didn't know any verses of scripture and the time the preacher had read it we were still looking for it. <laughs> so faith comes by hearing and hearing by the word of God. And you hath he quickened who were dead in trespasses and sins were in times past you walked according to the course of this world, according to the prince of the power of the air, the spirit that now worketh in the children of disobedience, among whom also we all had our conversation in times past in the lusts of our flesh, fulfilling the desires of the flesh and of the mind, and were by nature the children of wrath, even as others. But God, who is rich in mercy, for his great love wherewith he loved us, even when we were dead in sins, has quickened us together with Christ, by grace you're saved, and has raised us up together, made us sit together in heavenly places in Christ Jesus, that in the ages to come he might show the exceeding riches of his grace in his kindness towards us through Christ Jesus. Here's the verse, verse 8. For by grace are you saved, through faith and it not of yourselves it is a gift of God not of works lest any man should boast could we have a wee word of prayer Lord we do thank you for our brother and sister 
that so ably sang the words of thee. And we would ask you tonight, Lord, that you'll use them up and down the world. Lord, we thank you for their song, for their ministry. And Lord, we ask you tonight again for the word of testimony. Lord, hide me behind the cross that none might be seen save Jesus only. Lord, we've come to glorify your name. Take all the glory in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. I was brought up in a very, very strict brethren home. And I thank God for the teaching that I got at a very early age. I was taught that I needed to be saved if I ever wanted to get into heaven. And at a very early age, just with six, we have, I had five sisters and myself. I have a twin sister, and her and I are identical. My, maybe you didn't think there was another one of me, but there is. <laughs> but I'm the better of the two. <laughs> but anyway, there were six girls in our family. And you know, my mother died. She was taken home to be with the Lord when I was just six years of age. And I thank God for a godly father. A man that never drank, if he had been a drunkard, well, I don't know where six girls would have been tonight. And my father endeavoured to take us along to the gospel hall and taught us the things of God. One night coming out of the gospel service, I was just six and a half years of age. And I remember coming out that night, coming home, thinking of my mother's death, and remembering one thing, if that was me, I realised that I wasn't ready to meet the Lord. And my father led me and my twin sister to the Lord that night, six and a half years of age. We asked the Lord into our heart. Now, we went on very, very well with the Lord and attended all the meetings and everything that we could get our hand into the church. But, you know, whenever I was 14 years of age, I remember starting to work in a weaving factory. And, you know, this was a point in my life that I was realizing that I was really and truly saved, that I had to stand out from the rest of the world. That Monday morning when I started to work, I was determined to tell the girls that I was a Christian. Now I went in that Monday morning and I never witnessed for the Lord. Wonder would I be speaking to someone in the meeting tonight and you never witnessed for God. Will you listen to my testimony? And you'll see what will happen. I never told him that I was a Christian. Come dinner time that day and I still never said that I was saved. Now it wasn't long until those girls were talking filthy yarns. And there I was sitting in amongst them. I never witnessed nor never told them. Come the following week, I still went on to church, still prayed, still read the word of God. But come the following Friday night, I got my first week's wages. And my father let me keep them that week because it was the first pay. Now that night a few of the girls come to me and said, well, why not take us out for a meal? And I took a few of the girls out of the factory that night for their, lunch, for their dinner that night. But I remember going into the hotel and sitting down in the hotel. And this was the starting point that me backsliding. Now I remember sitting down that night in the, in the hotel, waiting for the meal to come. And a few of the girls started to buy the drink. Now here was the testing time. I was sitting there and he offered me a drink and it was a battle in my mind. I says, well, I'll have one, sure nobody will see me. And I put my hand and I took my first drink. Round came the cigarettes, never smoked in my life, never. Now let me tell you something, I was brought up in a strict brethren home. You weren't allowed to clean your shoes in my home on a Sunday. You weren't allowed to make your dinner on a Sunday. You weren't allowed to turn the wireless on on a Sunday. And that's the home that I came from. You know, wish to God we were back to them days. I think we're getting away from the Lord. We need to get back to them times. But anyway, I, I was, I'm just painting the picture from a godly home. And here I'm sitting, drinking. And you know, that wasn't the, the finish of it that night. I ended up maybe six or seven drinks that night sitting in that hotel, one cigarette after another, and then we ended up in a dance hall. You know, Christian friend tonight, maybe you're thinking of not going on. If the devil can get a wedge in, boy, he'll hammer it home. And that was the start of disaster in my life. I stopped reading the Word of God. I stopped praying. I never went back to the meetings. And week after week, Friday night after Friday night, 
found me in the lounge bars, found me in the dance halls away from the Lord, week after week. Shortly after that, I met Sydney, and Sydney was only out of jail that week when I met him. Now I want to tell you people, whenever I met Sydney, him and I fell in love. I'm not ashamed to say that. We wanted, we really wanted to be in one another's company. With my father, no way was I going to go with this boy, only out of Boston, only out of jail. And I ran away from home. Now, young ones in this meeting tonight, I wouldn't want you to follow those footsteps. It's not easy. Far off fields are green. I ran away from a godly home. And eventually, Sydney and I got married, not with my, my father's wishes, no way. But anyway, we got married, and we had our first wee boy. Now, let me tell you, we lived in one room, somewhere else, wherever we could get living, and that was our life, all because I got away from the Lord. Christian, tonight, are you walking further, closer with the Lord? Are you walking further away? I never intended being a drunkard. But that's what happens when you get away from the Lord. Time went on in our lives, and eventually, well, we got a wee house. We didn't live without it. Never took my food. All I wanted was drink after drink. This went on in our lives, and our wee boy was four and a half months. And I remember one night, Friday nights, we used to look for somebody to mind him till we went out to the pub. And... One day in particular, one morning, I remember he took ill and I asked Sydney to go for the doctor and when Sydney came back, he was Sydney got, got drunk and the Lord took that wee baby from us. Now let me tell you, mothers, you understand what that would be like. And I couldn't, this is a bitter pill for me to swallow, no way. And I remember the day of the funeral, my father come round to my home and we blame God whenever things happen in our lives, don't we? God gets the blame. And I remember turning to my father, and I says, well, why did God take this wee baby off us? No way, my father says, was he going to let that wee boy be brought up in a drunkard's home? If you're fond of the drink tonight, don't you tell me I'll take one and pass it over. You watch yourself. I never intended being an alcoholic. Wrecked. My home absolutely wrecked. Let me tell you, only Sydney Murray and I loved one another. I'm not ashamed to say that. Our marriage never would have lasted. Week in, week out, after the baby was buried, well, every week we had a free hand. Every time we could get money, dancing, drinking, living it up. And that was our lives, week in and week out. The Lord blesses with her wee girl then. And, well, it was the same old thing. But you know, remember one time in particular, Sydney had got into trouble, he was fighting, and well, so much fighting that the police used to come all the time. If there was a robbery or anything going on, they used to come to the house to see where Sydney was. And they came that night, somebody had been fighting with Sydney, and Sydney was taken into the courthouse, I remember that Monday morning. Now I had my wee girl that morning, and I took her over with me over to the courthouse, just her and I. My sisters absolutely disowned me. I was so down, so low. I hadn't a coat on my back. I hadn't a shilling in my pocket. Now remember one thing, the way of the transgressor is hard. I paid to get in, but it was harder to get out. Let me tell you, I never intended these things. Never knew what it was. But that morning I went over into the prison, down to the courthouse on the Albert Bridge to see where Sydney was, what was happening. And whenever I went in that morning, he was standing on handcuffs with the two policemen. And he shouted across at me that morning, Lily, I'll get off. I was only fighting. And you know, the judge put him down for another four months. I don't know whether you ever would have felt like this. But I remember standing in that courthouse that morning and watching the two policemen take Sydney out in handcuffs. And I was standing there with my wee girl, just a wee toddler. And as I stood there that morning, I said, lift up my heart, and I said, Lord, how am I going to face the world? Now let me tell you something, whenever you're down, nobody really cares. Nobody. They used to laugh at Sydney and me. They used to talk about us when they seen the two of us rolling home full drunk. And I remember that morning I said to the policeman, 
could I get round to see my husband? And he took me round to a wee cell that day, for they were moving Sydney up the Crumlin Road jail. And as I went round to that wee cell, there was just a wee, wee window in it with bars on it. And I was speaking through the bars to Sydney. And my wee daughter, this is a thing I'll never ever get out of my mind. I was standing talking to Sydney through these wee bars, and my wee daughter got her hands through the bars <coughs> and cried till I had to pull her away. You know, mother and father, if you're saved in this meeting tonight, get the joy of the Lord in your heart. Because I want to tell you, if you stood and looked at these things, whenever I look back and think where God lifted me out of, I pulled my wee daughter from those bars, crying for her daddy. And I remember coming out of that courthouse that morning, and I stopped on the Albert Bridge. I could take you to the very spot tonight where I stood on the bridge. And here was my prayer. Now, I never went, would have talked to the Lord after that, never thought about God, but I remember standing on the bridge. And I lifted my heart to the Lord, and here was my prayer. Lord, I have nothing to go home for. My electric light was switched off. I had no coal in the fire. I hadn't a shilling in my pocket. I hadn't even a loaf of bread on the table. And I lifted my wee daughter. I said, Lord, I'm going to finish it all. I was going to commit suicide. And I stood in that bridge that morning, and I lifted my wee daughter out of the pram, and I threw her wee feet over the bridge to take her life and take my own life, for I had nothing to live for. You know, it was an awful thing to stand on that bridge. It was so lonely. I hadn't Sydney. I had nobody. And I was going to finish it. And that's the way I stood on that bridge that morning. I'll never forget it. And as I threw wee Elsie's feet over and held her by the feet, just about to throw myself over, when a voice spoke to me in the bridge. Now, I'm not speaking about visions. Or anything like that. I'm speaking about... An audible voice spoke to me in the bridge. And I turned round and this young man grabbed my Elsie by the feet, pulled her up over the bridge and pulled me back from the corner of the bridge, put his arms round me and he said, Lily, what's the matter? And all I could think about, son, who sent you here this morning? Now, young ones in this meeting and older ones, if you want anything done for God, Commit your way unto him. Yes. Please do. I believe we as believers today, I'm speaking to my own heart, we're so haphazard, we we'll run out in the morning, and we we'll never commit our way unto the Lord. And that young boy that morning, I said to him, son, who told you to come over here? Nobody knew that I was here. He says, Lily, I was praying this morning. And every morning I say, Lord, lead me to someone in trouble. My, if that boy hadn't have obeyed the Lord's voice. The Lord told him to go walking over the Albert Bridge where he found me standing. You know, God knows all about you tonight. You can bluff the pastor. You can bluff everybody else. But remember one thing. God knew I was in the Albert Bridge and he knows you're in this meeting tonight. And if you're not saved, you'll give an account of this meeting. And that young man put his arms around me. And this was his prayer that morning. Lord, I'll win Sidney Murray for you. That's a good prayer. And he believed that, that young man. He put his arms around me and he lifted my wee daughter out of my arms and he walked me home and he gave me strength that I thought I never would have gotten. I'll tell you one thing he did do. Now, this is a good sermon. You get anybody down and out, don't preach to them. Oh, don't preach to a hungry man. What good would it do to preach to him? But I'll tell you what Jim done. He put a five pound note in my pocket. Now, I'm not here looking or talking about money, but I'm only letting you see, if you're ever talking to a down and out, help them and then tell them that God loves them. I come home and I want to tell you people, after four months, Sydney got out. I used to drink out of the wee wine store at the corner, up and down. Sydney got out after the four months. I remember standing up, waiting on the two doors, Crumlin Road opening for Sydney to come out. And that night, the two of us were full drunk again. 
and we started it all over. We could remember one thing, whenever you're chained and fettered, no. there's nothing only the blood of Jesus Christ no. can cleanse you from your sin. We went on like this for many, many years, but one night I remember, the two of us been out Friday, Saturday night, drinking all night, in the early hours of Sunday morning, I wakened well, it was dinner time Sunday, whenever the two of us wakened, and the horrors of drink, and I had a few shillings in my pocket, and I said, Sydney, will you do something for me? Will you go and get me a ten-glass bottle of wine? Now, you people wouldn't maybe know about drinking, but whenever you've been drinking, you need a cure for the next day. You must get a drink. And I said, Sydney, go and get me a bottle of wine. And he left me that afternoon, and he went away down Consbrook Avenue looking for this ten-glass bottle of wine on a Sunday afternoon. And he heard singing just in a wee tin hut. And he heard the tambourines going. And he heard the people praising. And he thought it was a club. He thought it was the Rangers Club. He went across looking for a drink. And then he went. And he knocked the door. And a gentleman came out to see what it was he wanted. And Sydney says, well, I'm, I'm looking for a cure for my wife. He, and the man says, a cure? He says, yes. I'm, is this a, a pub or a club? And the man says, no, you'll not get a, a drink in here, but you'll get a cure Amen. if you come in. Amen. Isn't that nice? Amen. You know, I believe we as believers need to have a wee bit more push. You know, the outside world is not ashamed of, of what they're doing. And we as believers, even myself, I'm speaking to my own heart, we need to get up and go on for the night cometh when no man can work. And let me tell you, Sydney went into that wee meeting that night. That man brought him in, an old boiler suit. All of his clothes were pawned. Everything we had, absolutely. He wasn't looking at the situation. He was looking for a drink. And he went in and he sat in the back seat in that wee gospel hall. And who was the preacher? None other than the wee boy that met me on the bridge. Boy, God doesn't make no mistakes. Don't you limit God. Don't you put him in a corner and say, stay there and I'll take, take you up when I need you. No way. And that young man had the joy of leading Sidney Murray to the Lord that night. You see, God had him there at the right time. Sidney come home and let me tell you, there was a bit of a rumpus when he came in. I was looking for the 10 glass bottle of wine. And I said, Sydney, where's the wine? Now, here's a man. Now, let me tell you kindly, and I don't say this in a hurtful way to hurt him, was in jail, was in Borstal, was in and out of prison, knew nothing about the things of God. And the minute he came in that night, I said, well, where is it? He says, Lily, don't be shouting, but let me tell you something. I give my heart to the Lord tonight. Isn't that nice? You know, some of us are saved for years and we're so ashamed. And that night, only maybe an hour saved, he come home and told me. I says, well, if that's the life you want to live, it's not for me. No, I meant that. I didn't want to become a Christian. I was enjoying my life. Now, for three months, that was on a January till a f the following March, if ever I lived it up, I used to go out to the pubs and drink. Sydney used to go to the wee gospel hall. Many's a night I was lying in bed, full drunk, didn't know my own name. And Sydney used to come in from the prayer meeting, and I used to see him on his knees, faintly where I was full. And here was his prayer, night after night, day after day, Lord, will you save Lily? And this went on continuously. He used to come from the prayer meeting and come round the pubs and bring me home full drunk. And that was my life. But one afternoon, my godly father came into my home and I remember him well saying to me that day, Lily, why don't you get your hat and coat on? Go along to the house of the Lord and encourage Sydney. I'm so ashamed of you. And you know, my father never knew really that I was drinking the way I did. 
I said, well, sometime I'll think about it. And he left me that afternoon. Sydney went to the prayer meeting. Now, the devil always makes it easy for you. A wee wine store just up the back entry where I lived. And I used to nip up and down with a wee bag. And I could have got all the drink that I wanted, as long as I had the money. He went on to the prayer meeting and my father. And I was up and down the wee wine store getting my drink. But Sydney came in from the prayer meeting. And was just in making a cup of tea, and I was sitting in the horror as a drink, when we heard an awful noise outside our wee kitchen house where we lived. And Sydney opened the door and went out to see what it was, and it was my father, a wee a big man over six foot, slipping down the door. He had fell in the hall with his Bible under his arm. Sydney lifted him up, brought him in, and put him down in my settee. Now he never spoke to me, but he looked across. And this is what came into my mind. A few hours he spoke to me, and there he passed into the presence of the Lord. Now those words, a few hours, came into my mind. Lily, get your hat and coat on and get right with God and go to church. And that was the last time my father spoke to me and passed away to be with the Lord. Now let me tell you, there was no way I was going to trust the Lord. Took my son took my mother and now taken my father there was no way i was going to get right with god sydney tried to talk to me and i was rebellious 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 that was on a tuesday wednesday all day let me tell you i never seen the later day full stupid drunk one cigarette after another and that was that whole day wednesday <laughs> Wednesday night, I went up to the wine store again and I got another 10 glass bottle of wine and I bought 50 cigarettes with the last money that I had. And as I come down, I said, Sydney, well, I'll go round home for my father was being buried on the Thursday. Now, listen, I'm not adding to this testimony. I'm telling you God's truth. And as I sat down in the settee, Sydney went on to bed with wee Elsie and I said, Lord, well, I'll, to myself, I said, I'll have a drink and I'll have a smoke because my sisters wouldn't let me do it when I would go round home to my father's home. And I sat down in the settee and I poured out a drink. Didn't end up at that. Ten glass bottle of wine went, the cigarettes, one after the other. And I remember one thing, sitting on the settee, still one o'clock in the morning, I couldn't walk to go round home. I was so drunk. Every time I went to get up, I fell back down again. And at two o'clock in the morning, God, the Holy Spirit, spoke to my heart. And this is what came into my mind. If I take you, Lily, as I've taken your father, you're not right. You'll never meet your wee son again. You'll never meet your mother again. No, you'll never see your father. And this went on in my mind, and I poured out another drink, trying to push it out of my mind. And God, the Holy Spirit, spoke to my heart again let me tell you people at half past two in the morning crying my heart out stupid drunk up one step fell down trying to get up to the top to where Sydney was in bed eventually got into the front bedroom and all I could shout at Sydney Sydney how can I get right with God now let me tell you Sydney got out of bed and he got down beside me where I was lying on the floor, full drunk. And he said, Lily, what's the matter? And I said, Sydney, I have to get right with the Lord. And Sydney led me to the Lord. He says, Lily, will you say this wee prayer after me? And I repeated the sinner's prayer. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And I asked him to cleanse me of all my sin and help me to be a child of his. Now I got up of my knees and I was Sydney's first convert. Wow. Praise God. We've led hundreds to the Lord since it. But you know, here was the, the point in my life. Here's how I knew I was saved. The minute I got up as sober as if I'd never took a drink, and here was the temptation. What are you going to do about the drink under the settee, Lily? What are you going to do about these cigarettes? And I only say this by the grace of God. I couldn't do it of myself. I went down the stairs. 
I lifted the wine that was under the settee and I poured it down the sink, praise God. Down it went and maybe 50 cigarettes in my pocket and they went at the back of the fire and I can say from that night till this, the Lord delivered me. And I can honestly say every day with Jesus has been sweeter than the day before. Now maybe you're saying to me, well, I wasn't a drunkard. I wasn't a jailbird, thank God. But let me ask you one thing. Was there ever a time in your experience for your walk on the clean side of the street to hell? I was walking the dirty side, but it all ended up in a lost eternity. If there was never a time in your experience that you asked the Lord to come into your heart, oh yes, maybe you go to church. Maybe everybody thinks you're hail hearted you're a great fella, a great woman, but were you ever saved? People don't like that word today. But you need to be born again to ever see the kingdom of heaven. And I would urge upon you tonight, if the Lord was to call you, I'm speaking to the unsaved now, those that are not saved in the meeting, I don't know any of you really, but I'm speaking to you tonight. Are your, is your heart right? If the Lord was to call you right now, will you be with him? Or will you be in a lost eternity with the bloods of my shoulders? You won't be able to say you never heard it. You're hearing it from this platform. And you'll give an account to God yes. when you stand before him. So I urge you tonight. Could be your last night. I don't know. It could be mine. But let me ask you. Is your heart right with the Lord? I trust that it will be after this meeting. In Jesus' name. Amen. 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 So glad I'm yours, Lord. So glad I'm yours. So glad your mercy has followed me. So glad you find me. And set me free So glad I'm yours, Lord So glad I'm yours oh, yeah. And I'm glad I'm yours too, Lily <laughs> The meeting's finished I think there's been enough said Before I close in a hymn I want to say a little story, just a simple little story the Lord put on my heart just sitting there. A couple of years back, Lily took me across to Blackpool for a holiday. I don't know what she took me to Blackpool for, for it's all bingos and all them up and down the streets, and that's all there is. But in Blackpool, a thing happened, and I want to close this meeting with it. And Lily reminded me of it. She said she paid to get in, but she couldn't get out. When I went to Blackpool, I walked away down to this place and called it the Pleasure Beach. The Pleasure Beach. And as I walked down this Pleasure Beach, looking at all these people paying to get in, I come across these House of Mirrors. <laughs> A House of Mirrors. And people were paying to get in, and they couldn't get out. Because the mirrors, they were hitting them. But this lady I watched, she was a lovely looking lady with a hat on. Now, it's not very often you see anybody with a hat in a pleasure beach. You couldn't get them to wear a hat in church, never mean a pleasure beach. But she had a hat on. And maybe that's what drew my attention, her having a hat on in a pleasure beach. And I watched her, and she started to move about, and then she realized she, could, she paid to get in, and she couldn't get out. And then the next thing she touched, hit her nose a wee bit in one of the mirrors. And then she hit her hat, and her hat turned, and everybody's laughing. Everybody's laughing. In fact, she, she, she brought such a, a commotion to the place that people were starting to cry. And this chap went in and just went like that and caught the whole of her and brought her straight out. And about ten minutes later, I'm watching a little train set. And this wee midget on the train. When I spotted this fellow who went in, and I said to him, being what I am, Big Kennedy knows what I am, I says... I says, uh, you, you certainly knew the way out of that place. 
He says, I should I own it, I made it. He says she was kicking up a bit of a rumpus there and people couldn't get past the footpath. That's why I brought her out. And whenever I went away home and up the stairs and get into, before I get into bed, had a little time of prayer, the Lord brought this to my heart. He said, Sydney, she paid to get in and she couldn't get out and everybody laughed at her. She paid to get in and she couldn't get out and everybody laughed at her. And that was just like Lily and me. My God, we paid to get in. And we paid hard. And we couldn't get out. And you know, friends, I know somebody tonight, and he not only knows the way out, he is the way out. I am the way, the truth, and the life. He is the way out. And you ask me tonight, can I be saved? Yes. Yes. You can be saved, for he is the way. Can I be sure? Yes, he's the truth. Can I be satisfied? Yes, he brings abundant life. Amen. Friend, would you like your life change tonight? Would you like your marriage change tonight? Would you like your home change tonight? Would you like to have these sins forgiven? I'm asking you a question. Have you got a problem tonight? Let me say this as I close this meeting. Christ is the answer Amen. to my every need. Amen. Christ is the answer. He is my friend indeed. Problems of life, my spirit may assail, but with Christ my Savior, I can never fail, for Christ is the answer. Amen. He's the answer to your need tonight. He's the answer to your need. Sydney, Sydney, could you help me? That's what you cried. Sydney, could you help me? And I said, Lily, are you sure? She didn't say this. I said, Lily, are you sure you mean this? Because you've got drink on you. She says, I mean it. And I got down and put my arms around her. And we made the wee prayer. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. Come in today. Come in to stay. Come into my heart, Lord Jesus. And friends, that was 40 years ago. And me or her has traveled the country preaching the gospel of the grace of God. And in them 40 years, we never held another half in the whiskey. We never held another pint of Guinness. I never held another gun. I never done another robbery. I often say from herring bone picking to roast beef and chicken. <laughs> from beer and figs to ham and eggs. From a Johnny Walker to a gospel talker. From handcuffs to white cuffs. Glory to God. Free, friends. Free. That's what I'm talking about. And him who the sun sets free is free indeed. That's for our heads. Every Christian praying, please. Every Christian praying. Every Christian praying, every head bowed, every eye closed. I want reverence. I wonder if you're sitting here tonight and you'd love to have this transformation. You'd love to have your life changed. You've got problems. Christ is the answer. You've only got to take this wee step. Now I want to throw out a wee lifeline tonight and I haven't done that. And you, you bear me with that, and I feel the Holy Spirit working tonight. Amen. And I want to throw out a wee lifeline. I want to give you a wee opportunity. Now, while every head's bowed and every eye's closed, if you would like to be a Christian, here's what the Bible says. Now, listen very carefully. Him that confesseth me before man, him will I confess before my Father which is in heaven. The very fact of you putting up your hand in a meeting like this is the fact of salvation. You're showing me that you want something. Friend, is there one tonight while every head's bowed, every eye's closed? And you'd love to be a Christian. You'd love to be born again. Raise your hand and I'll see it. Raise your hand, I'll see it. That's it, put it up, I'll see it. God bless you, sir. Take it down, thank you. Just take it down again, we'll not embarrass you. There's a lady who spoke to me today. She wanted to have a talk with me. Would you like to put your hand up if you're here tonight? I don't know where you are. God bless you, darling, yes. God bless you. Yes. There's another one. God bless you too. Amen. Thank God for that. Is there another one? Lily, watch for me, darling. Is there another one? Thank God for these three. Is there another one? I'm speaking to a backslider tonight. Come on home, prodigal. Come on home. God loves you. Now the Spirit of God's moving. You've only got to put your hand up. The struggle's over. Remember, Jesus put both hands up when he was nailed to Golgotha. 
Now, I never make a long appeal, for I'd rather the Holy Spirit would do the work. And I want to say this tonight. Here's my last little altar call, my last little appeal. Is there a man or a woman, a boy or a girl, or a backslider? You'd like to raise your hand and I'll see it. That's it, I'll see it. It'll not be in any of the papers. It'll not be in the telegraph. It'll be in the Lamb's Book of Life for all eternity. Let's see your hand. My last altar call. You have nothing to lose, only your sin. You put your hand up, your life will be transformed. Amen. Is your one? <coughs> yes, yes, God bless you. Amen. Yes. Amen. And I'm going to leave it with you. Let's pray this prayer together. Are you ready? Pray it out loud. Father, I come to thee. In the lovely name of your Son, the Lord Jesus Christ. Thank you for his coming into the world to die for me, a guilty, hell-deserving sinner. Take me as I am tonight. Unlike Naaman of old, wash me and make me clean and anoint me by the power of your Holy Spirit. From tonight, lead me on that I may grow in grace and in the knowledge of my Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. I ask this in Jesus' name. Amen. What Remember, I'm your servant for Christ's sake. Thank you very much. We'll stand to sing.
to control Somebody loves to give you peace in that soul Somebody loves to give you strength on your way And don't you know you can have it today Reach your hand out, brother, and sister, don't be afraid. Don't you know the provision you have been made? There's a cross and a hillside, yes, it's empty today. Won't you look under Jesus, he won't turn you away. Started anew, Christ lifted. 